What is up, guys? Uh, we just watched the first two episodes of the Mandalorian TV show on Disney Plus. Sadly, we had to give Disney eight dollars so we could see this stuff. But uh, we we were hyped going into the Mandalorian because it looked decently promising, and you know, Filoni was involved. And the only man who should be in charge of Star Wars. Yeah, we I, other than George. And then. Uh, yeah, so we, it was ex- it looked exciting and promising going in from the trailers. Like it looked like it was gonna have some good stories. So we just watched it, and I think it delivered on those promises. Yeah, it was pretty it went good. Went above and beyond. We're gonna talk spoilers. So if you have not seen this show, uh, don't proceed. This is gonna be a podcast. There's gonna be not a lot of video to it. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, I'm not even having spoilers on the thumbnail. Like, I got I got I got spoiled before <laughs> I even watched The Mandalorian because. Yeah. I saw Baby Yoda thumbnails on, out on the internet before I... People were just like, here's Baby Yoda! I'm like, well, shit. So, that, I gave you a spoiler warning, and yeah. I, I saw that shit. But yeah. you immediately said Baby Yoda. Okay, but... Um, or, like, not Yoda, so, but, like, so, Yoda species. So, let's kind of, like, go in sequential order through the first two episodes. It started out a lot like a Western, right? And yeah. it gave me all those Western vibes, like that kind of like bar scene, you know? Like... Hey, what the fuck is up? And then like, no, fuck you! Like, you hit the guy. It, it it had like a lot of those Western vibes. Um, and I was reading this academic article on Star Wars the other day, and I think George Lucas, I don't know if this is a quote or not, but George Lucas said that the Western was the last fairy tale of like kind of like yeah. you know how you have like fairy tales throughout like history, but like now that we're in the modern world, we don't really have fairy tales anymore. And as like complicated as the Western is, like the Western is like a fairy tale in of itself. So. What, I thought the opening scene was pretty good, but like we did talk about how that yeah, fish guy the was fish annoying. guy was really cringy and like so you had kind of the only bad part. Yeah, like the whole the whole the rest of the episode was really good, but the fish guy was like just yeah. Annoying. So like you had like this one character who was like this blue fish dude, and like he just wouldn't shut up, and yeah. like his dialogue was really bad, and I didn't like the acting either. Yeah, it's he seemed but like. I mean, the actual planet itself that was just, like, all ice was pretty Yeah, you cool. had all ice. So far, everything, all of the visuals that we've seen yeah. so far have been really good. Um, and the fight choreography is easily, like, yeah, better but, than the sequels. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, the fight choreography, it's, like, it's a lot, it's really awesome. Like, yeah. So, the, we have the Mandalorian guy, right? He's, like, like Jango Fett, like Boba Fett, and, like, the Mandalorians we've seen throughout the Clone Wars. Um, he's got a flamethrower Knowing on his Disney, wrist. It's probably not a guy, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were joking about how he takes off the helmet and it's a girl, but that's a whole joke. But so he's got a flamethrower. He's got like a like a thing on his wrist that he can shoot and like pull you or like, yeah, like, 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 like the, a the, like the rope, the thing. string that like yeah. Boba Fett used on Luke in episode six. And then he's got like a rifle and a blaster, so he's like fully loaded and ready to to rain hell on the world. But. So far, what Disney has produced, right? You have the sequel trilogy, which, is, and then you have yeah. Rogue One and Solo. Uh, out of the the Disney stuff so far, up to the Mandalorian, Rogue One was like the only stuff yeah. that was like Rogue One was the only like good stuff thing. that kind of like fit into like the rest of the saga. Honestly, like well, seven like, and eight, seven and eight just shit on Return they don't, of the Jedi. They, they, they so like, hard. They don't line up with what yeah, what else was there. They're just a disgrace. Like, Can you give some insight to that besides just saying that it's a disgrace? Everything about it. Yeah, <laughs> from the plot to like, like I, the I, lack I, don't, of... I don't need to describe why it's bad. Um, but basically, if you, if you like it, you're just stupid. Don't insult our <laughs> podcast viewer. <laughs> All right. So, but basically, um, when it comes to episode seven, it's basically a shameless rehashing of a New Hope, and it, but like, it's like significantly inferior because all of the characters are just. Like not well rounded. Yeah, they're not well rounded at all. Uh, and all the returning characters from the original trilogy are wasted completely. Yeah, and including like including and like Luke isn't even in episode. Luke isn't even in the movie when he should have been like the titular character. He could have been like the main um, character. And also, Leia could have been another really important. All right, but we're not character. talking about the sequels. We're talking about the Mandalorian. So, uh, episode seven lacked originality that's true like they yeah. literally reuse x-wings they reuse everything all the they reuse the, the first order is basically empire but what struck us so awesome about the mandalorian is that it is like blown away with originality it takes stuff that we've seen before and uses uh, it in like new and uses ways. it in ways that 
I never even wanted. So, like, in the second episode, there's this action sequence with a sand crawler. That's, like, the vehicles that the Jawas And used. it was, like, the most unexpected And thing. honestly, like, I was, like, I never even thought about having an action sequence against Jawas. And it, it happened. It was really cool. It surprised me. It was cool. And I was, like, hey, this is fucking awesome. Yeah, it was, like... A really cool scene. Of this and it, it had like kind of callbacks to Indiana Jones, which is also like another Lucas George film. Lucas yeah. film movie. It, very, it heavily reminded me of that. Yeah, because like he's like, it's Climb, basically like on, on a big on side, side of a tank and there's like rocks. And they drive it into the side of the cliff. But it was like awesome because like you got to see the sand crawler pretty much in action. Like yeah. we, we've seen it before in A New Hope and a little bit in Attack but, like, of the Clones. But it didn't really do much. But it was just kind of like moving around. It wasn't like, there was no threat to it. It was like under siege. And yeah, like, he was disintegrating Jawas, just yeah. like Darth Vader said, no like, disintegration. No disintegration. <laughs> so, like, it, like, it connects cool. to that. It's really cool. Um, but there's also that fight scene with the uh, assassin droid. Yeah, but I, I primarily, I think, the, the sandcrawler scene, um, and then, like, the Jawas, like, kind of, like, being really weird, like, cutting open that egg yeah. and eating it. It was weird, but it was, all, it was like, original and cool, and it was, like, a risk that the producers of the show yeah, took. Yeah, like, they took risks. And, and like, it, was, it was not safe at all, but it was awesome, and, like... I didn't know that I wanted to see that, but yeah, that's the thing that you, now that it happened, I'm like, that was really cool. That's Why the thing I that it should that? be doing is like stuff that we didn't know we wanted, but it's like really good. Yeah, and, and like the Clone Wars does that a lot. And the thing about and it is like, that it wasn't like something super unfamiliar. Like they didn't try and thrust like something completely new on you. It was something that we've seen before, but but in a different yeah. way. And that's like one of the best things to do like with literature or movie or arts is to take the familiar and make it unfamiliar. Yeah. And then also in episode two, we just watched episode two, so we'll probably talk a little bit about that more in episode one, but you had that monster thing. Yeah, from like the Geonosian arena. From the Geonosian arena from Attack the of the big, Clones with like, the big tusk. Horn. That uh, it was like Anakin's kind of monster. Yeah, when the one that Anakin wrote. When Padme, Obi-Wan, and Anakin each had like their own little monster or demon that you had to fight. But... It kind of like paralleled very similar to, like to Jango, Jango Fett, Fett fighting, fighting it, or yeah. like because we had the blaster, you have like the flamethrower, yeah. you have the the wrist string that like pulled him. I around. mean, seeing one of those alone was like pretty cool because it was like it it connected. It was again something we've seen before, but like in a different. It connected it to the prequels, which was cool, yeah. and it like so yeah, the episode had like strong connections to Attack of the Clones and a New Hope, which was yeah. really interesting. Um. So we want to talk about Baby Yoda now, I guess. I mean, I don't know what it is. What's well, it's, it's a it? it's a baby or uh, like a, a young child, it's a fifty year old Yoda, which is of a baby the same Yoda. species. So I guess like so in Empire Strikes Back, Yoda was like nine hundred, right? Yeah. So that means in the prequel trilogy, he was like in his late eight hundred years, eight hundred seventy, and, and he was an he was pretty much like an family. old man then. Yeah, but so like that kind of makes sense that as like fifty years old, he would have been yeah a child. So. I agree. But I, I've actually been watching a lot of interviews with George Lucas lately because I want to learn more about like the, the core saga, like the real the saga. Hardcore lore. <laughs> um, but he basically said that like, so like in his original story, there was no Yoda. Obi Wan would have lived through like the entire thing because like Star Wars was just one movie before he had to cut yeah, it up. I know that much. And he basically said that like Obi Wan like during the Death Star fight, he would have just been, like, Leia just, like, watching the whole thing while Luke was in the thing, so he decided to kill him off because he wasn't going to do anything for the rest of the movies. He was just yeah. going to kind of stand around. So, but after he killed him off, he's like, but I need a new mentor, so that's when he made the better Jedi, the like Yoda. Yoda. And the whole deal with Yoda is that, like, you don't know his species, you don't know, like, where he comes from, you don't know anything about that. Yeah. And that's, like, the appeal and, like, the importance of the character. So, but with the baby... As long as they don't ruin those things, I think that's a... It, I'm pretty it, sure they won't. Like, there's been this mystery surrounding the baby. Yeah, it, it's... And I think it'll stay that way. I think way. it will stay that way. Um, they, if they, get, they have to maintain that mystery, um, but do it, like, justly, yeah. if that makes sense. Don't... Like, they don't, can't be like, this is what Yoda's species is. They can't They can't break that mystery, or otherwise, like, yeah, it's I'd say not keep good. a mystery, but don't pull a Jar Jar Abrams and just not have any background to it but like still have, yeah i think we gotta still figure have like the mystery maybe give it. like some allusions to like where but, yeah. the baby came from or like because those imperial dudes were one yeah. thing i mean we'll figure that out i'm assuming yeah i have i feel like i have but, i have much more faith in this than like yeah this was really the, the show was really promising so excuse me but going into the show i was like I was like, I have high hopes for it because it's about bounty hunters, and bounty hunting brings in questions of morality, right? Yeah. 
And, and straight I up having the, a yeah. baby brings in all those questions. Because the about, assassin like, droid was going to kill it. And, and then he the stopped it and, then, shot it. and then the baby just saved him from the, the monster yeah. thing. So... I think in the future episodes, he, he's I don't, not. He, I don't, I'm not sure if he's. He's not even really a bad order. guy. Like, yeah, like he's, he's a bounty hunter, and you could say he's. I evil. mean, there was like that clan of other Mandalorians, so I'm assuming he's doing what's best for his people or something. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you had a theory that they might be like, like what was it? Like just Mandalorians that are like just like like kicked out of Mandalore yeah, something or like, like that. Like you said, dispelled. Or I what? said diaspora. Diaspora. Was the word. Yeah, like a Mandalorian diaspora. I'm assuming like. Season seven of the Clone Wars, it's said is going to have Mandalore. Yeah, the siege in it, of Mandalore. And like, with tell us, and maybe tell us about this because the kind of politics where it like left off was kind of yeah. Because it kind of just oh, dude, you know what? What? What if you know how we saw the flashback and then how like the the super battle droids in the trailer that's, are that's like, probably assumed a flashback. as a flashback? What if that is the siege of Mandalore? That probably that's probably are, is the separatists going to come to Mandalore or is probably. it just going to be like a republic? Mandalore I mean, conflict? I mean, if the republic goes to it, the separatists are probably going to want a part. Yeah, because I think because it's a neutral system. I don't know too much about Clone Wars season seven. What's supposed to Dooku be? Dooku <laughs> originally wanted the Death Watch to take over Mandalore, but after they failed, he yeah stopped. So he probably wants. So Mandalore. I feel like. The Mandalorian backstory might have some connections to Clone Wars season seven. Yeah. Like I don't know if he like he probably won't appear in it, but like the same political conflict yeah. is present in both. I'm stories. assuming it's gonna and, like, tie in for somehow. continuity sake. Like his Disney's making both of them, and it's I assume Filoni's involved in I mean, season Filo- seven. Filoni has to be if it's he's, not. He's, produ- he's producing. Uh, uh, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to talk. But, I mean, I'm assuming we're going to find out about these other Mandalorians. And it'd be cool if, like, some of the... Yeah, because, like, at first I saw one, I was like, is that Boba Fett? But then you were like, no, wait, they're all they're yeah. all just in Mandalorian armor. I'm like, it'd be cool if... Because there was this... In the in Season 5, I just watched rewatched The Clone Wars. I don't know. Satine's sister was a member of the Death Watch. It'd be interesting if, like, she was one of these... Mandalorians in the yeah like maybe the lead one that burned down the thing and gave it I think that was I don't know if that was lead I think it was just the armor yeah or something like that but yeah so that'd I, be a cool tie in or something they're like part of a guild and it kind of yeah. reminds me of like Skyrim like like <laughs> like you get the thieves guild they're like the thieves guild yeah. but bounty hunters <laughs> it's like they're a mix of like the thieves guild and the dark brotherhood but Somewhat, like yeah Mandalorian um. I kind of wanted the droid to live and be like a member of his crew, but yeah. So we have that assassin droid, and that was pretty assassin kick-ass. Because cool, like ever since the Empire Strikes Back, you we've had this fascination with bounty hunters, and I think the whole Star Wars fandom has like because you got Boba Fett, you got Bosk, and then Bosk you don't you don't see Bosk a lot, but like in games like Battlefront Two and in the Clone Wars, you see Bosk a little bit, and like yeah, Bosk is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. I, mean, I, I would like, love. He's to only see in the Bosk movies for like return. five seconds. If Bosk is in this, that'd be pretty cool. I, I hope Bosk is in the ship, but I don't know if he will. I mean, there were the one other... of the writers for Solo wanted to put Bosk into the movie, and I wish he did. But like, you know, Disney's. Dumb. Oh, I didn't even mention the flaws with Solo, but <laughs> it was it was just the SJW droid. Yeah, it took it, away it, 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 and they like politics made and Lando gay or some yeah, shit. Yeah, politics and art takes away from the art. Yeah, it, it takes you out of the experience, and obviously, politi- like you will have politics in something, but it had it doesn't have to be slap you across the face sort of thing. Yeah, it, it has to. Art makes you, art should make you think about yeah. what's going on and not tell you how to think. So, uh, yeah, that's that. But onto the assassin droid, like you, IG eighty eight was in Empire Strikes Back and he was pretty interesting. He didn't really do anything, obviously. but yeah, he was just there because of like the stuff at the time. They but didn't. in the Clone Wars, you see the assassin droids all the time, and they're pretty. Sick. Uh, I think like the first time there's like an action sequence with one is in uh, Downfall of yes. the Droid. Where Anakin is so good going to that, that and barge. And then the uh, R3 turns them on. On turns them on. And then they, they're present a lot throughout later, like with the other bounty hunters. And yeah, the, Cad Bane. Cad Bane has some. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. So we've always seen these these things in action before, but like in animated, so and, to see. But in live action. A, a live action one, just like going around kicking ass. Yeah, like that, shooting. that was really cool. It was a really awesome sequence. And like we saw, like, you could probably saw a snapshot of it um, in the in Mandalorian the trailer. trailer. But. The whole full flight sequence was really awesome, and it was kind of like a western. You know, he's like, yeah, it was definitely like a gunfight. Like it just reminded me. It was me. a very gunslinging part. I also love how the ship he flies is like the same ship that yeah, the bounty it, hunters fly in the Clone Wars. Yeah, 
And they, they allude to that because the annoying fish guy is, like, pre-Empire. Yeah, I'm so, but, so that guy was annoying, and, like, I but, feel like he definitely devalued the first episode a bit. Like, I was just like, really? But, but then, like, but then yeah. when it led off to his, like, freezing in the car. Yeah, that was pretty funny. It was funny, and it was, like, ironic. So I feel like I feel like the writers and the yeah. directors were trying to, like, make him annoying. So, like, when it happened, it was kind of, like, a satisfying yeah. moment. I just think it went a little bit too far because it like did kind of like get like really like I was about to like I hope the whole show isn't like this yeah, otherwise was, they're gonna be done. I was done. like this is I'm gonna but like, like once he like got off once screen, he got like, out of whole, the way like, the whole, like, whole rest of the episode was great the whole like that it gave me like this feeling of like oh it's Disney but then like after yeah. it was over I'm like hey, okay thank God <laughs> after it was over I'm like yes this is full of <laughs> yeah like. I liked how the stormtroopers had their armor was like dirty and shit. Yeah, it was like too. bloody and shit. Yeah, I liked so, that. So I assume in the re- future episode, like, because he's gonna go back to the empire. Yeah. He's like, I got the baby. So I, I think we're gonna see more about the fallen empire people. I don't know if there's gonna be any references to Luke's order at this time or not. I don't know. Um, baby Yoda will become a Jedi. <laughs> see, Baby Yoda used the Force, um, and that was really interesting. Yeah. And he just gives me more mystery of Yoda's species, because he's like... And what I thought was super interesting, at the ending of the first episode, you have the Mandalorian and the baby kind of like touching fingers, kind of like that famous painting, I think, of God and Adam, right? Yeah. And it's like, is that a Michelangelo painting? Is that like It's on at the, the top of the Sistine this, Chapel. Yeah, the Sistine yeah. Chapel. That's like Michelangelo, right? I think so, yes. So, that that's, that's like a very famous and religious connotation. like, And that's between... God and man. Force user and man. But, I don't remember the painting exactly, but wasn't the Mandalorian in, like, the God position and Yoda, like, in the Adam position? But, like, I feel like... I wasn't thinking about it like that. I was just watching this shit. Yeah, but... (laughs) Alright, so, I I have an analytical mind, and we gotta, I have an analytical mind, too, but I'm not, like... (laughs) But, like, the touching of fingers like that, it just, it cut, like, you can't avoid that imagery. Like, that is very deeply ingrained into culture. But I feel like Yoda is in that godly position in The Mandalorian's Man. Because, you know, man is in Mandalorian. But, (laughs) that was was bad. But... But, like, Yoda has always had this, like, mysterious... And he's, like, super strong with the Force. And, like, uh, George Lucas has said, like, the Force is, like, an, an amalgamation of, like, every religion. So, like, the, the Force is basically yeah. God. And Yoda has always been, like, the closest one to the Force um, that we've seen in the series. Yes. And maybe that be, might be tied to his species. Like, I don't really know it what might what this child something. brings. Um, and as long as, like, the mystery of the species isn't, like, revealed, yeah, yeah, I think... I agree. But I think at this point it might be safe to say that the species is connected to the Force. Like it might be like, wasn't there like a female Yoda, like I, Yaddle I, or something I think in the in Phantom, the Phantom Menace? Menace? But yeah. like just in the background, it's kind of dumb. So and that's interesting too. There's um, also like that flying snake that had a beard on the Jedi Council. Oh yeah, was, and that that appeared again in season six of the Clone Wars, and it's like what? I don't remember that. He's in the background in the Jedi Council. Oh, nice. <laughs> but yeah, so that is our Mandalorian episode one and two review. I don't know if we'll do these for the future episodes, maybe like the end of the season, or depending on whether we're free. We were just together and we watched yeah. it just now, so we had the time. It was pretty good. It I'm was more pre- excited for that, the next episode than I am for episode nine. I, I'm honestly, like at this point, like I've said before, like I'm not even going to see episode I'm not, nine. I'm not gonna like, I'm not going to pay for it. I think it's going to be a steaming hot pile of shit. <laughs> and, but I think the only good thing about it will be Ian McDermott's performance as Palpatine. Even if they ruin Palpatine, Ian's a really good actor. He is a really good actor. And he actor. knows Palpatine more After than seeing, anybody. like, the interview with him, it's yeah. like, he, he's a really good actor. So, like, I have no faith for the movie, but I have faith for him as Palpatine. And I just hope that they don't ruin I mean, Palpatine's re- character with dialogue. There was <laughs> after the trailers they showed for it, there was no reason to make me want to see it. Yeah, it didn't give us anything. If there was just like a money, they, they shot, say it's like they say it's like it's the end of the saga, but like the saga ended with Return of the Jedi or Revenge of the Sith. Like, like like that's like, the first the core six episodes, and like with seven and eight, they're trying to like continue or like change the story but the story is already over and yeah like, the story was it was like a ray being a nobody a modern epic of and like there's like that leak six. of like ray uh, like stealing the skywalker that's name identity like, theft i'm an honorary skywalker i'm like no that's an that's identity theft. kylo should have honestly been the, the main character because he has the direct 
bloodline and plus his struggle of turning to the dark side and like kind of like killing the jedi parallels with anakin yeah and star wars is arguably an epic and an epic tradition you have like the repetition and the cycle and like george lucas says it's supposed to rhyme like poetry yeah so kylo should have honestly been in that spot but we can go into this problem this is the mandalorian much. review impression podcast um i hope you've enjoyed listening and tuning in with us uh yeah Disney Plus, it was it was all right. I don't know if you would want to get it just for the Mandalorian. You had to be a Star Wars fan to do it. But there were some scenes that were exciting Sand crawler. and stuff that I didn't know I wanted that I did want. Yes. Like, <laughs> oh, before Which we is... end it, this this ties into the sequels a little bit. But so the Sand Crawler thing, it was Indiana Jonesy, but it was also kind of Mad Maxi because it was like high speed desert. Yes. Thank. And I've had this conversation with you before, but I haven't brought up into a video. But I want to make a video on it before, but. Ray's background as a scavenger is like really boring. Like she's just walking around, taking stuff, and then we're supposed to believe that she'll like go, go around from like climbing on star destroyers to like kicking ass with a like yeah. minimal combat experience. Like she hits that one guy with a staff, but like that was kind of like from behind. Like that wasn't even real combat. And then she's supposed to yeah. beating a Sith Lord who like killed An all of Luke's order. Experienced <laughs> veteran. Yeah, but so I've always found uh, in my head. So like we we talked about the. Uh, unoriginality of yes. the force awakens compared to the originality of the mandalorian for the originality of the force awakens if the writers and and i would say jar jar abrams jj abrams and bob that Iger and disney jar jar if they took jakku which is a really cool planet because it has like all of this all crash of uh like yeah. imperial and rebel stuff and if they made that Kind of like a Mad Maxi planet, like you have with scavengers and, and scugs and warlords who like take those ATATs and, and take then the like modify them and like change them and make their own tanks yeah. and cars and speeders. That'd and be stuff really cool out of those parts. Like you could have like an ATAT like head like with the cannon on top of like a speeder or something. Like all these like really weird designs, but like kind of fit for warlords. And then you have like basically fighting over resources, kind of like yeah. the Jawas were in this episode. And then if Ray was like born or like grew up in that, like. As like kind of like kind of like Furiosa, like the like I hate because like whenever people criticize Ray, people are like, "Oh my God, you hate women!" But it's like, no, we just like we hate poorly we, written. We characters. hate poorly written characters. And for example, in Mad Max Fury Road, like Furiosa is a female character that's like kicks ass yeah. and like literally kind of takes 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 charge of the movie in more yeah. ways of which. Than Max. Max's character. I was yeah. I was forgot his name. I was like, what's Mel Gibson? <laughs> his wasn't even Mel Gibson. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> my bad, my bad. He played the original, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, my bad. But like, I was like, what? What's what's Max's name? <laughs> it, it's it's like it's like it's Obama's name. It's like, <laughs> yeah. What's but like, arguably Furiosa takes more charge in that movie yeah. than Max does, and is like that's a good movie, a stronger character, and like. Max is more of the passive character. He's like, oh, I'm along for the ride. Like, I have really no choice. And she's like, I'm doing this. So, but, like, I feel like it would have been really cool to see Rey as, like, a scavenger be, like, part of this, like, warlord environment on Jakku, which is, like, a Mad Max planet. Yeah. But, like, in the Star Wars setting with, like, AT-ATs and at like, converted into new stuff. But, like, I think that would have been awesome. But, like, they played it so safe. That's the problem. With The Force with Awakens. And that is the problem with it. Um, That's one of many problems with it. Yeah, but like, Mandalorian didn't play safe. They showed us like, Jawa's like kind of like culty. Like, yeah, getting eat, eating, eating an egg. <laughs> eating, yeah, eating a fucking weird egg. But like, and then it was Baby cool. Yoda. It was cool. They're taking risks. Like, Baby Yoda is like the riskiest business. Yeah, I, I can see it going maybe bad in the future, but like, but I think if they like. Not, not 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 play it safe, but like as long as they don't ruin the mystery of this this spe- the Yoda species, but like maybe give us a little bit of insight, but you know, like not too much. I mean, they didn't do it with Rada the Hut. They won't do it with Baby Yoda. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Rada the Hut will be in episode nine. <laughs> I'm calling he, it. I, say, I have spoken. I have spoken. <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> I have spoken. J.J. <laughs> Abrams is going to copy Return of the Jedi and put Adult Rod of the Hut in it. No, I don't even care about episode 9. But, so, this Disney Plus series was decently promising for Star Wars, and we were getting the Kenobi show at some point. At some, probably 2021. And I'm really happy to see Ewan McGregor do that, like... Yeah, I'm excited for that. If, like, it has the same level of, like, familiarity, but innovation... As the Mandalorian, yeah, did. I want to see him fuck up some Sam people. 
Yeah, I want to see a Sand People versus Obi Wan sort of deal. Like either like the Tuscan Raiders are attacking Luke's, like Luke the Owen Farmstead, yeah. um, uh, or like just in general, like Obi Wan's just like camping out and he gets uh, raided. Seeing like his blue lightsaber, like either like in the nighttime, like in the night desert, uh, like that'd be really sandy. cool. Yeah, and he's gonna be like, uh, I think he said he's gonna have PTSD against the Anakin from from Anakin. And, that, and then we're going to see Watto again. It's going to be great. And maybe Yoda will be in that, too. Yoda should be in it. I I think Yoda and Liam Neeson should be in it. Liam Neeson I definitely want Liam Neeson and Qui-Gon. If Qui-Gon Qui isn't in it, it's going to be dumb. I don't know I don't know if you can say that only a Sith Lord deals in absolutes. Okay, but like <laughs> Obi-Wan's supposed to get his training to immortality from yeah. Qui-Gon. I think Liam Neeson would be down to do it. Like I think Qui-Gon's like one of the most... We're, like, so off-topic off the Mandalorian <laughs> now. Should I end it or keep it going? A, that was just a Star Wars podcast at this point. <laughs> All right, well, we'll talk more in the future, y'all. This, this has been our Mandalorian review. I have spoken. <laughs> we have spoken. <laughs>